Now, I know at the end of the last video, we said we'd make sure all the data was filled up, like there were no missing values. But after reviewing it, I think it makes a little bit more sense to make sure it's all numerical first. So let's make a little heading. We'll call this 1.1. Make sure it's all numerical. Wonderful. And now to begin with, we kind of need another data set. Now, why is that? Well, because our heart disease data set, this one here, is already all numerical. So that being said, let's import another data set, which is our trusty car sales data. Now, if you remember this right at the start, I've kind of revealed a little bit here, but this one only has 10 rows. And what I've done is I've gone and manufactured a little extended version of this, which has the same headings, make, color, odometer, doors, and price. But this time we've got a thousand rows. I'm not gonna scroll through them because that would take too long. You're just gonna have to trust me on that. Anyway, I can prove it. Car sales, let's import it. pd.readcsv. Remember, I've moved all of our CSV folders into a data file, which is kind of best practice. Keep your working directory tidy. You know, car sales extended dot csv wonderful then we're going to have a look at it car sales dot head wonderful and then we'll figure out how many there are a thousand beautiful told you so and then we'll look at the data types make is an object color is an object odometer doors and price are all integers and now these are objects because they're strings and they are categories whereas these are numerical values now what we have to do, because this section is make sure it's all numerical, is before we can run a machine learning model, we have to convert these to numbers. But just to prove it, let's try anyway and see what happens. So first of all, what we're gonna do is split the data into X and Y. So we'll use these four columns, make, color, odometer, doors, or well not price, but these four to try and predict the price of a car. Now, have a think to yourself, does this actually make sense? Could you do that in real life? Do we expect our machine learning model to do well on this kind of problem? If you were given only the make, so Honda, the color, a white Honda, with 35,431 kilometers on the odometer and four doors, could you predict the price was $15,323? Maybe, maybe not, but you probably need a little bit more information. The same probably goes with our machine learning model. But nonetheless, let's try and make one. So split into X, Y, which is, we want the feature matrix. So we're going to go X equals car sales dot drop. Now we don't want the price column. Oh, what have I done? Actually press shift enter. I'm getting very trigger happy in this notebook. Price access equals one. And we're going to do Y equals car sales. Now this is going to be just the price column because we want to use the X to predict the Y. And then we'll also split into training and test set. Split into training and test. So do X train, X test, Y train, Y test equals, we saw this before, train test split. We'll pass it X, we'll pass it Y, and we'll pass it test size equals, we use 20% of the rows for the test data set. Wonderful. Well, let's try to build a machine learning model that'll learn on the training data. So the X train and the Y train, and then predict on the, the test data. All right, build machine learning model. Now this time we're going to use still a random forest, but I want you to guess what this random forest can be used for. So we're going from sklearn ensemble import random forest regressor. Now, if you remember back in our workflow, we were predicting a classification problem. Now this random forest regressor is the same as a classifier random forest, but this time it can predict a number, which is what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to predict the price of a car given some attributes about it. So we're gonna import a regression model and we're gonna set it up. This time, instead of calling it CLF, we'll call it model regressor beautiful and then we'll go model.fit we want to train it on the training data so it's going to learn the patterns the relationships between the x variables and the price the label and then we're going to score it evaluate it on the test data 
y test. Now, how beautiful is that? This is the power of SK Learn, right? We can train, create a model, train it, and run it, evaluate it in four lines of code. We could really do it in less, but four lines of code is pretty damn good to build a full-blown machine learning model. So let's do it. Oh no, we got an error. What's happened? Value error. We kind of expected this though, right? Value error, could not convert string to float Nissan. Ah, now we see what's happened, is that our machine learning model can't deal with strings. So as we kind of knew, we have to convert these into numbers. So let's see how we do that with sklearn. Now we're going to kind of go through this little chunk of turning the categories, make and color into numbers with sklearn. And it might seem like a bit to take in to begin with, but uh, we'll write it out, we'll see the code in action, and then we'll go back through it and see what it's actually doing. So from sklearn dot preprocessing, sklearn has a fair few modules that, that each do a, a number of different things. One hot encoder. Ooh, what's that? We haven't seen that before. We'll put a little comment on here what we're going to do. Turn the categories into numbers. Wonderful. From sklearn.compose, import column transformer. Oh, I wonder what that does. You can probably kind of guess what column transformer does, but we'll see it in action first. Then we're going to define our categorical features. So in our case, our categorical features are make, color, and a tricky one is doors. Now, you might be thinking, why doors? Let's go back up, have a look at it. Doors, four, five, four, four, three. Hmm, why is this? Well, let's see it. Car sales, doors, dot value counts. It's, it's safe to assume that doors is numerical, right? Because we've got four, five, and three as the values. But it's also categorical because you could go cars with four doors fit into this category. Cars with five doors fit into this category, so there's 79 of them. And cars with three doors fit into this category, so there's 65 of those. So we're gonna, in our case, treat doors as categorical. And I'm just continually spamming command S so the notebook saves. It's like I've ingrained it into habit, just like pressing shift and enter to run a cell. So we've got three categorical features, beautiful. And then we're going to make this little variable called one hot. We're gonna take in advantage of the one hot encoder class that we've imported. So we'll instantiate that there. And we're gonna make a little variable called transformer. And then this one is going to use the column transformer. This is gonna accept a list of tuples with a name. So in this case, we'll call it one hot. And then we'll pass the actual transformer that we want to use, which is the, the one hot variable that we've just instantiated. We're gonna format this to make sure it's nice spacing. And we're gonna pass it the list of features we'd like to transform. And then finally, oh, we don't need that. Let's bring that back up. Got stuff all over the place here. Bring that back up, wonderful. And then here, we're gonna pass one final variable or parameter to column transformer called remainder equals pass through. Beautiful, and then we're going to have a little variable here called transformed x, which is basically going to be the version of our x data. Let's have a look at what x is. Basically transformed x, we don't want all of those, is going to be the version of this except converted into numbers. So let's see that. So we've got our transformer here. This is where we're going to go transform dot fit transform on x and then we're going to have a look at transformed x oh we got some invalid syntax oh we've got a comma here name error transform is not defined classic transformer there we go wonderful so this is spitting out an array maybe if we put this into a data frame that would make sense. So let's go PD dot data frame. See if we can actually transformed X. Wonderful. So you might be looking at this going, what the hell is this? But if we bring back X, 
what we're going to see dot head we're working a bit zoomed in so we're going to have to kind of uh keep bouncing up and down a little but what has happened is that because we've told scikit-learn that hey make color and doors are categories what this code here has done has transformed it specifically one hot encoded it so now we've converted the make color and doors columns into one hot encoded variables but the odometer column so which is here you can see the numbers are actually the same still so 35431 yep 192714 yep correct correct so the odometer column hasn't been changed so if we look back up here the reason why make color and doors have been changed is because we defined them here we instantiated a one hot encoder we'll see what that is in a moment then we've created a transformer using column transformer so basically this is saying hey column transformer take the one hot encoder and apply it to the categorical features and for the remainder of the columns that you find pass through don't do anything to those and then what we've done is created transformed x and fit our transformer so fit transform to our x data now that's a kind of a big of a mouthful there and you might be thinking what does one hot encoding even mean well let's have a look we'll go to our keynote so this is one hot encoding in a nutshell if we have four cars so car zero one two three and their colors are red green blue and red if we wanted to one hot encode these so basically turn the categories into numbers it would look something like this this is what one hot encoding does we've got car zero and because the color of car zero is red this little arrow here could be the code that we've used to transform our data frame so to transform our categories into numbers so this is one hot encoding so because car zero the color is red it gets a one and it gets a zero for the other two categories and the same for green but this time because it's green it gets a zero for red and a one for green and a zero for blue blue exactly the same zero for red zero for green and a one for blue because it's a blue car and then finally because car three is also red it has a one just like car zero and there's zero and zero for green and blue now that's what we've done here except not only with the color column we've done it with the make and the doors columns so that's why we have zero one two all the way up to eleven features with zeros and ones now what we've done is we've encoded the different parameters of each sample so honda white and number of doors into zeros or ones so now the beautiful thing is our data is all numerical so what can we do well we should be able to fit a model but just in case that wasn't clear we've got one more way that we can do this and now so that we can go dummies equals there's a function in pandas called get dummies which is kind of like one hot encoding but I'm not sure I'm actually not sure why it's called dummies I just know that the function is get dummies so if we go dummies pd dot get dummies and we want to transform car sales we pass a list of the columns that we want to transform or turn into dummies so here doors now let's have a look at dummies here we go so I think because doors doors is numerical it hasn't worked on here but this is this is what we can see what's happening so we've got zero make BMW is zero so it's a Honda it's got zero for Nissan zero for Toyota and it's got zeros for black blue green red and white so if we went through this all it's done is turn the make and the color into zeros and ones beautiful so now that our data is all in zeros and ones let's try and refit the model so we want to go np dot random dot seed and we got 42 just so our results are reproducible we're going to use x transformed up here so this one here instead of x so let's do that x train we'll set up a new new training and test data equals train test split and we're going to pass it transformed x and y can stay the same because y is already numerical and then we're going to have test size equals 0 
excellent. And then we can go model dot fit x train y train. Beautiful, it worked. And now let's evaluate it. Model dot score x test y test. Wonderful. Now it worked, right? So because we used transformed x and because up here we did this little bit of code here to, to transform our data from being categorical into numerical. And previously, our model could not convert floats to or strings to floats for Nissan. So when we used our first x variable up here, our data was still in categorical form, so still using strings to, to represent a sample. And what happened? It errored out, got a value error. But now, Right down here, when we run the same code, model.fit x train y train and score, we don't get any errors. Why? Because our data is all numerical. Now, as for this score here, if we imagine the best score you can get is 1.0, the model probably hasn't done it as well as it could possibly do. But remember, we talked about that. If you were to look at this data here, the x data, and you were trying to trying to use this to predict a car's price, it will probably be pretty hard. So maybe the model has found some patterns, but they just weren't that great because there wasn't too much information about each sample. But that's not the point. We can look into evaluation metrics later. The point here is that we've converted our model, our data, sorry, from being non-numerical to completely numerical, and that has allowed us to fit a machine learning model on it. Now we've covered that, we've converted all our data to numbers, what happens if there was missing values? Let's check it out in the next video.